five o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll start out with roll call. Alder Person Flicky Paneski. Here. Perella. Here. Uh, Ackley. Here. And Feldy. Do we have anybody online? Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, everybody who's in the room, can you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Our second meeting of the year, so let's do introductions one more time. I'll start and we'll go clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever way would be going to my left. Uh, I'm Trey Mitchell, Alder District 9, and Chairman of the Committee. Tom Wolf, City Administrator. Grazie per Rilla, Alder Person for District 7. Roberta Felicki Paneski, uh, Vice Chair of Finance. Betty Ackley, and I am the District 4 Alder Person. Thank you. And then we'll move on to item 2.1, which is approval of the minutes. Is there any discussion? Otherwise, I'm looking for a motion. Motion to approve. We have a motion by Grazia. Do we have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. Moving on to item 3.1, uh, RO 112122, submitting a communication from the State of Wisconsin Tax Appeals Commission regarding the filing of petitions for review of determination by State Board of Assessors for manufacturing property in the matter of Georgia Pacific uh, Consumer Operations LLC and Georgia Pacific Corrugated LLC versus Wisconsin Department of Revenue. And I'll hand that off to Chuck. Thanks. Uh, a lot of these, uh, oftentimes we get these um, petitions for review on manufacturing property. Typically the city doesn't do much on these because the state basically makes the determination and then the state sort of runs the, the appeal once, once it's done. So the city doesn't get terribly involved in these. This one's a little bit different in that uh, we did hire outside counsel um, in conjunction with four other, four, uh, three other cities, the city of Plymouth, uh, the city of Nina, and the city of Green Bay, um, basically to look at this issue because there is a, a definitional issue in state law that's being contested that if we would lose in this case could have a major impact in, in other matters. In the Georgia Pacific matter for the city, I think we're, you know, 0.5% of the manufacturing property that's being dealt with and we're paying 0.5% of the bill. So maybe at the end, Todd can pull out $10 and give it to the lawyer. But um, uh, but it is, it is at least in front of you so that you're aware of what's happening. It has already been turned over to the outside counsel that we have uh, working on this case. I can answer any questions if you have any. Any questions from committee members? All right, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, seeing none, do we need a motion on this one? Motion would be to file, accept and file. Okay, uh, do we have such a motion? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. And moving on to item 3.2, submitting a communication from the Harbor Center Business Improvement District requesting that the city of Sheboygan release all funds collected on their behalf and those funds allocated to them for fiscal year 2021. Chad? Thank you, Chair. So the uh, Harbor Center Business Improvement District is the downtown area basically uh, includes South Pier Riverfront and then A Street from the bridge up to the Fountain Park restaurant um, and then a couple streets to the north to the east and west of that. 
So any property that falls within that area is taxed uh, under a special assessment charge on their property tax bill that goes into a separate fund for the business improvement district to allocate funds for events and different planning throughout the year, marketing and those types of things. Um, so they have a board that is appointed by the mayor uh, and the council confirms the appointments and they distribute those funds for the betterment of the businesses. The city, in, as part of our, our property tax collection process, um, we get those funds and they're calculated in the finance department and then turned over to the business improvement districts. Uh, it's about 150,000 or so a year is what they budget. Uh, the council approves their budget in November as part of the city budget. Um, so what they're requesting here is that those funds get turned over, to get released from the city and turned over to them so that they can institute their budget. Um, what I would say is they, so they're really an arm of the city. They're set up under state statute. They're very similar to how the redevelopment authority operates here at the city where they're kind of quasi governmental, um, but they have a number of, re of uh, requirements that they have to submit to the city. And one of those requirements is financial. So they're supposed to submit um, under state statute um, financials, audited financial statements or, or profit and loss statements or something of their financials at the end of the year. We have not received those financials for, for 2020. Um, so if the committee would so choose the recommendation and we've informed the board of this that um, we would like to have this uh, item be approved contingent on the city receiving an acceptable 2020 financial statement from them. Um, and then once we have that in house and we don't have any findings with it, then we will release the funding to them because uh, they've been in kind of a reorganization for some time. Uh, they let their director go about a year and a half ago, then COVID hit. Last year, they gave a, the majority of their funding back to their businesses and a grant granting program, so they didn't do any events or anything like that. This year, they're doing a number, funding a number of events, the night market, um, some concerts, some different things at City Green, um, some home, heart of the hometown marketing campaigns and different things. So they're, they've got, they're getting their kind of reorganizing, getting themselves in, in order, um, but still we need to see what their financials look like for 2020 and, and, and kind of do an, our own internal audit of them. So um, the recommendation would be to approve this request subject to them providing the 2020 financials. Thank you, Chair. I would like to also reiter reiterate uh, what uh, Chad is referencing because it's very important that we work with our business community, but it goes both ways. Um, we really shouldn't be just rolling out the money uh, because we have a policy, but then not forcing them or encouraging them to work with us on that full policy. We really need to be able to understand where is the money going. And as Chad said, there has been some changes even pre-COVID uh, with how they're administering it. And we've been trying to reach out to them. And the only way we really can help nurture that is to basically say that we won't release the money unless um, unless you show us the information that um, they, they're supposed to be giving us mm -hmm. realistically. I have a question. Uh, <coughs> um, I, is the fiscal year for them January 1, December 31? Yes. Okay. And um, when you say release the funds, do we literally release it to their checking account? Do they? We cut do, a check to them. So we cut a check for the entire thing and yes. then, and then. They, they deposit it in their account. Perfect, thank you. Did they release the fund or did they uh, show us the numbers for 2020 and 2019? They sh not for 2020. Those are the numbers we're requesting now. They provided us the 2019 numbers. Right. And Marty, the former finance director, and I had looked at that in Daryl, and it was satisfactory at that time. So then we released the funds. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from committee members? Um, so the... Just to confirm, the amount is $150,000, right? Well, they budget $150,000. I mean, it's, it's really based on what people actually pay. 
Um, so I don't know that number, but the finance department calculates that as part of their tax settlement. And um, I understand it is part of the process, but can you please tell us briefly what is that you actually look like into the fall in the financial statement that you are, are waiting for? What is it we need to verify as a seed? I think we, we just want to make sure that the, we want to understand, number one, it's a tax. So they're, they're collect, we're collecting a tax on their behalf, and we want to just make sure that the, the amount of money that they're paying out is consistent with what they said they're going to do per their budget, and that there's no other you know, discrepancies in it, and that it's, you know, and to understand what do they have in you know, their coffers, because you know, realistically, they have historically over the years uh, spent enough, you know, whatever they brought in, it was pretty much a zero-based budget, and at the end of the year, they would, you know, they'll go the year into a line of credit until they got the money, and then they would, you know, kind of reimburse themselves. So we, I'm guessing that they have some revenues that are excess because they haven't paid a director for a year and a half, and, you know, they only, I sit on their board, in full disclosure, I'm appointed to their board from the mayor, um, but we have yet to see a financial statement, even at the board level, to understand what their financials look like. Chad, just to kind of expand on that for Grazia, would it be a better way to say is to, to help make sure that they're managing the funds that are collected appropriately for the area businesses that are involved with the bid? Yes. Because the, the monies that's received, that the city um, receives, is supposed to go to the bid, and the bid is supposed to be helping to develop additional business in the bid. So it's really, the business owners are also looking to the city to making sure that we are nudging the bid to manage and use the money to develop additional business and growth within the bid. Yes. So if we're not reviewing it and holding them accountable, we're just rolling money through and it could be just sitting and doing nothing. Correct. Thank you. Helps. Thank you. Any other questions? Discussion? If not, I believe we are looking to rem for a motion to recommend approval on the condition that we receive those statements before the funds will be released. Yes. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye. Motion passes. Moving on to item number 3.3, .3, submitting a communication from the State of Wisconsin Tax Appeals Commission regarding the filing of petitions for review of determination by the State Board of Assessors for manufacturing property in the matter of NEMAC USA Incorporated versus Wisconsin Department of Revenue. Back to Chuck. Thank you. So this one is a lot like the one we did in 3.1, except we don't have outside counsel representing on us, uh, us on it. And there is likely not the need for us to really do anything other than receive information about what is happening in, in the case. It's, it's not related to the particular issue that we have with Georgia Pacific. So for that reason, I, well, I can answer any questions about it, but what our office will do is just keep an eye on it and let you know if something changes. Uh, but uh, the, we think the proper motion would be just simply to accept the document and file it. Any questions? I've got one. Is, is is keeping an eye on it when they appeal? I am presuming they think their taxes are too high and the state will come in and do an assessment and then we will or will not collect more or less. It's tax. really what it is. Okay. We will, you know, the state will decide whether they were correct because the state does the assessment and then the state handles the appeal and the state will decide if they assessed it properly. Okay. And it's basically NEMAC coming and saying, we think our taxes should be lower. Okay. And the state will say yes or no. And if the state says yes, well, then we'll have less money to work with. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And is there any other discussion, questions? If not, we're looking for a motion to accept and file. So moved. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. And last up, we have item 3.4, resolution authorizing a budget adjustment and appropriation in the 2021 budget regarding the MyCivic citizen engagement software system. Uh, 
I guess I'll jump in there and Eric will save me if I misspeak. Okay. Um, my Civic is actually a, it's a platform, an electronic platform that we are looking for uh, implementing into the city of Sheboygan. It's basically a, a one-stop shop app. So it's going to allow us to take uh, our other websites and, and devices and basically take it to a one to one area for the for our citizens to, to actually go to. So this app will actually allow, if you wanna go to uh, the city's uh, website or DPW's website or, um, or other websites, we can also implement uh, residential, uh, not residential, restaurants, things like that. So it, basically we can, we can get, the, get the citizens to go to things with one click versus having to go online look up the actual URL to take us to the, you know, Sheboygan or even SheboyganCounty.com. Um, we also are going to be able to push out and receive in, in information. So it's kind of like our 311 for DPW, but it's actually, we'll be able to put survey questions out there. So this is part of our implementation uh, towards our strategic planning is how do we get information out to our constituents and how do we get them to be able to communicate with us um, on a much easier platform. So this is uh, called My Civic, and I believe we'll probably be giving some presentations in the near future, but right now we're just talking about a, a budget adjustment uh, to basically pay for the actual um, program itself. Chad, go ahead. In the document it talks about, we looked at a different cit citizen engagement uh, a uh, platform called Bang the Table, and that program does not integrate with our existing ERP system, so it would have been a standalone system. Um, this was a better deal for us to try to integrate all of them. Um, and I think the other thing, you know, there's a lot of things that in the planning department per se and other departments that we do on a planning basis, that'll be a good way to engage the public in specific projects. Um, more, you know, the strategic plan is one piece of the puzzle, but I think there's pro projects in every department that is another way of getting more citizen engagement into what we do on a daily basis. Another good example is it'll actually integrate with our, uh, you'll hear DT, DTS, it's actually our EAM program that we are looking to get approved by council in the near future for all of our equipment assets um, management system. So again, this is a, integration tool into the systems that we already have within the city, trying to streamline it. As we all know, nobody wants to have multiple clicks. They wanna be able to just click one button and it takes you wherever they wanna go. So. Thank you, any? Yeah, so, so apps like my neighborhood, dot, you know, my neighborhood and those kinds of things that I access and that pop up will now not pop up like that or it will pop up under my civic on my civic you'll actually have an out, uh, an outline of buttons that you can pick and choose and you can just push it and it'll take it there so Perfect. if you if you want to go to um dpw there'll be a, a button to take you to dpw if you want to go to you know say the water I utility did. you can hit the water utility button if we have one of those as an okay. example the okay. other advantage is right now we have i don't know a number of, of social media sites. Yes. Every department has yes. their own yes. social media, and if yes. you want to find something, you got to remember, okay, where did I see that? This yes. will allow us to pull all of the city social media accounts into one portal, so yes. it'll be a list of everything from every department that has been sent out for that day, and you can see it all on this one app icon versus having to go to all these individual sites. And remember what the individual sites are and how you Correct. access them. So It'll be all integrated into one location. One click and you'll see everything related. It could be DPW, police, fire, water utility, everything will come into this one portal. Perfect, thank you. It'll also be able to allow us to push alerts out and information. Any other questions from committee members? Thank you. First of all, I, I actually applaud applaud the the initiative because it, any time that we improve the channels for communications, I think it's um, a great action. Um, 
so will be my civic, the actual name that mm -hmm. that citizen will see. Yes. And um, is there? Can you give us one or two examples of what the citizen can do? I, I understand the you know the, the convenience of the one platform, but if, is there anything that they can do that we can do as citizens? For example, if we need something, request something, is there any capability of that sort that will come with my civic? Like the click to report or uh, something That'll else there that there also. is a need. Yeah, so all that stuff. So everything that you would go to all these different websites to get will all be populated on in this one location. So it'll be basically an app for every day-to-day -day thing. So if you want to make a request for a, um, a pothole or you wanted to make a request for well, a happens. building code issue, you'll be able to, it'll all be right there. You don't have to go to all these individual sites. It'll just be apps on this home page, all kind of very much streamlined on how things happen. So it's like a one portal for everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But, but, but we can not, also... not for services. It's not, it's not related to a citizen's service. So if a citizen needs a service, for example, a permit or something that doesn't, doesn't have that capability, can they do that through that or not? Service for? Individual no. use. No. 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 no it's not. related to the city's operations. Very good. Thank you. But we will also be able to um, promote different functions and things. So like if we have like the Evit lamp, Evit amp, sorry, with the mask, <laughs> um, we can actually promote things that are going on within the community, within different areas. And I believe that it's uh, able to actually um, take information from our constituents so that it'll kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll basically tell them things that are going on in their area. So if you're in the Memorial neighborhood area, and that like this morning there was a, a sewer problem, it would be able to notify them that streets are closed or something within their area, as an example. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Discussion? If not, we're looking for a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, do we need to be more specific? Are we good? Motion should be approved. That was a motion to approve, right? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that case, we have a motion and a second. So all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye and the motion passes. Our next meeting is on June 14th. If there's any scheduling conflicts, I guess let us know before then. And then we're at 5.1, looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Right, motion and second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.